In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this animation in Camtasia. G'day, it's Paul here from Democast Media, helping you to unlock your creativity and get things done with visual communication. So today I'm gonna to answer a viewer question from Huddy. He wants to know how I made this effect in Camtasia. This works great if you want some ideas on how to turn a potentially boring and plain screencast into a work of art. So I invite you to have a short screen capture ready in your editor. It might just be one or two clicks, but this will help you to, to let it sink in. Now, and if you're wanting to level up your marketing or tutorial videos, I invite you to check out the video description for a link and you can uh, trial Camtasia for free. So let's dive in to the tutorial. So here I have the, the recording with the animations included. So I'll just run through just the anatomy of how this all worked. So here on track one was the screen capture with some uh, keyframes. So I'll explain what those do in a moment. In the second track was the footage copy and pasted, but I trimmed it down to the last second and I applied a glow transition and there was a keyframe there too. And on track three was the annotation that that yellow rectangle that goes over the top. So if I press play and I'll have uh, add the animations panel open as well. So you see it click there and I do the rotation and then this thing pops out of nowhere. So um, I'm just going to explain from the start to here. So that's, that's Heidi's question. Everything after that, um, that is a tutorial in and of itself. I mean, it just sits outside of this one. If you're interested in, in, in seeing a follow-up, uh, give this video a like and leave your request in the comments section. If there's enough likes and requests, then I'll do a follow-up. So I'm gonna, exp I'm gonna apply the four steps to making this animation, the pan and the rotation, I'm gonna insert a separate recording in a moment. Okay, so I've got the separate screen recording here. I'm gonna apply the four uh, steps to getting that, that pan and then that rotation effect happening. So the first thing you wanna do is to hone in on the cursor and see uh, where it starts and where that cursor path finishes as far as the panning is concerned. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in or scale this uh, footage. And I can do that by just dragging out those handles like this. And if I need to, I can use the scale slider up there in the properties panel and move this along until I see the cursor. So I'm gonna leave it around there. Next, I'm gonna scrub along the timeline and that's the starting point. I'll leave a marker right there. If I hit the space bar and I move this along, you'll see outside that field of view, if I scrub along the timeline, that's where it's hovering over that drop down arrow just before it, it triggers those options. I'm gonna put another marker there. That's more or less where I want that panning to, to finish up. And then after that, I want the rotation to start happening. <clears throat> it will have happened but it'll definitely sort of hit that, that crescendo right there when, when that highlighted, that option is highlighted. So I'll put another marker right there. So I've identified the critical points there in that cursor path. The next step is adding that, that pan animation. So it'll go from there to there. So the way I do that, uh, I'll go to, I'll be in the animations panel there and under zoom and pan, I wanna move this rectangle and place it uh, where I want that pan to, to finish. So I'll drag this over and I'll leave it more or less around there. So it's just some estimates. You can always fix this up. I'll let go. So I've inserted that pan effect and on the timeline, you'll see that green arrow. So that is what's going to be used to track the cursor. But you'll see that it's not in sync with the cursor yet. So I'm gonna move, I'm gonna click and drag that keyframe and I'm bring it over to marker number 23 here, the second marker. And that should be much closer in sync with the, the cursor. 
So if I press play, I'll go back and press play. So it's just, it's following it. It's just a little bit off. So I might uh, play around with a few things. I'll move this back a little bit and press play. Yep, okay, so that's better. Let's bring that marker down. It's, uh, it is following it. I want to lengthen out, lengthen that out a bit just to make it a bit smoother on the eye. So let's see how that works now. Yeah, okay, so I'm much happier with that. So just have to, if you need to, you can move that keyframe uh, along that the timeline so it, it, it tracks the cursor uh, the way you'd like it to. You make that keyframe longer, it, uh, it slows down the movement. So we've done the second stage. So we've got the pan in there to make it uh, smooth. The next step is to insert a custom keyframe. That's what's gonna help you create that rotation effect. So under the animations panel, click animations, and you're gonna drag this custom keyframe onto the timeline, and we may as well place it on that marker there. This is what we're going to use to um, program the it, program this in such a way that the screen capture tilts. To make that happen, you're gonna look at the properties panel and you wanna adjust the Y axis here. That's what has it move left or right and, and angle it. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll select the zoom and pan and you'll see what happens here when you actually change the Y axis. So if I move this up, it goes right. If I move it down, it goes left. Uh, and left being it's, it's in the negatives there. So I'm gonna make that negative 25. And that, that's the level of rotation I'm after. Um, so we're, we're essentially now going into the, the fourth step. So we're changing the rotation and we're also changing the scale so that uh, the detail that you want, it, you see that on the screen and it gives it that nice dynamic look. So while I'm happy with that rotation, I, I'm not happy with, uh, it's sort of blown up on the screen here. I want it to be a little bit further back. So I will go to scale again and bring that back like this. And I'll drag it along here until I, I see all of this and, and all of this in the one place. So just do this, keep reducing the scale nearly there. That should, that would do it. Okay, and you'll notice that the red dot is active. So as I was moving that along, that red dot was sort of getting bigger. It's indicating that I'm, I'm ch making changes to that keyframe um, without having to add any other keyframes to this. So let's just scrub along here and see how that looks. Yeah, so that's not bad. It's a little bit cut off there, but let's just see how that works. I could probably live with that. But if you want to, if you want to make an adjustment, so I'm going to demonstrate here. So you want to make an adjustment to that pan and have it go a little bit further. Double click on that. See the red dots activated. I can now move, I can now move this over. And so then when it when it shows up, I can see all of that. That's what I wanted. So you double click on those the keyframe to make that change. And then when I scrub along, you can see that rotation sort of happens there. I'm gonna double click on this and I might even make, um, scale that up a little bit more, drag this over. I'm just making little uh, fine tunes here. Okay. Yes. All right. So I've done that. I finished the fourth step there. So you just make adjustments on the scale and the rotation until you're happy with it. Always remember to double click on those keyframes um, so that you're not uh, replicating more of those things and it doesn't work out the way you want it to. So I'm going to just go back and hit play. There you go. And well done. Give yourself a pat on the back for following that through there. So that's how you do this animated rotation effect. Um, question for you is, 
how do you plan to use this effect in your next project? Leave your comments in the section below. And uh, look, if you enjoyed this video today, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like. And if you want to get more tips and tricks on how to unleash your creativity with visual communication, then make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.